Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our mining system by getting different things to come out of the rock. So what I did here is made some different crystals. And then when you break a rock, one of these crystals will come out. Okay, so that time we got a red crystal. Okay, we got another red crystal. This time we got a blue crystal. Okay, another red crystal. And finally, a purple crystal. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and start by making the crystals or whatever other object you want to make for your rock, and then we can take a look at the script for it. If you want to make one of these crystals, I started with a block. And then for the size of it, I just changed it in the properties menu. So if you scroll down to the size section, I chose one by one by one. So it's going to be 1, 1, 1. Next, I inserted another block part into the game. And then after that, I inserted a wedge. And then before we go too much farther, I'm just going to change the color and material so it's a little bit easier to see. All right, so that's better. So what I'm going to do next is take this wedge part and rotate it. So if we go up to the rotate section, we can just spin it around. There we go. Okay, and now I'm going to resize it so it's the same width as my part here. And you can do that if you just go down under the property section. We're going to change this 4 to a 2. Okay, there we go. So now I'm just going to get it lined up with this part here. It doesn't really have to be perfect because when we add the neon to it, it kind of hides any imperfections. But basically, you're going for something that looks like this here. After that, we're going to group these two parts. So go ahead and select both of them and then go under the model section and press union. After that, we're going to raise it up a little bit. And then I'm going to make a copy of this part. So I'm going to press control D. After that, I'm going to rotate this part and basically I'm just going to flip it around. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to move it down a little bit until we get something kind of like that. Okay, after that, I'm going to group these parts again. So what we have now is one of the parts of the crystal. So since we have this all as one part, we can scale the whole thing. So get it to whatever size you want to, and then we're going to attach it to this part right here. Okay, so something like that would work. And then to make the other parts of this crystal, we're just going to make copies of this part right here. So you can just select it and then press Control D. And then after that, we'll just rotate it and move it into the new spot. So I'm going to rotate it this way. And then I'm going to move it over to the other side. Okay, there we go. And then we'll make another copy of it. And this time we're going to rotate it this way. And then we'll do one final copy for the last side. Okay, so something like that would work. So once you have all the pieces in place, we're going to do one final group. Okay, and then we have our crystal. So at this point, you can apply the color and also the material. So let's go up here for the material, and we're going to change it to neon. And then we're going to select a color for it. So let's say for this one, we want to make it this dark blue color. And you may notice when I selected the color that nothing actually happened. So what you may have to do under the property section for this union is find the section that says use part color. When you select that, it should change it to the right color. You're more than welcome to make this look however you want to. What I would recommend though is once you're done making all your different objects, that you give them different names in the explore menu. So over here I just said crystal 1 all the way to crystal 5. Okay, so after you make your objects, we're going to go down to replicated storage. And you're going to make a folder that's going to store all your different objects. The name of my folder is crystals because that's the objects I'm using. But you're more than welcome to choose a different folder name here, as long as you remember to update it in the script. Okay, so once you have your folder, we're going to be inserting all of our objects. To do that, you can just select them all in the workspace. Press Control C to copy. And then you want to right click on your folder and then press paste into. Okay, so let me show you how that works. I'm going to delete all these crystals here. 
we're going to copy these ones from the workspace. So I'll press Control C. Another option you can do is just right click over here and then press copy. And after you do that, you're going to right click on your folder and then press paste into. Once you do that, you should see all the objects inside the folder. Okay, so once you make your objects and put them inside the replicated storage, we can now take a look at the rock script. Okay, so inside the script, we're gonna start by making a couple new variables. So the first one is gonna be the rock's position. So we'll say local, and then we're gonna say rock, and then POS, which is gonna be short for position. And that's gonna be equal to our rock dot position. After that, we're gonna be making a variable for the replicated storage. So we'll say local replicated storage. And this is gonna be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're gonna put replicated storage. After that, we're gonna be adding a few more lines to this section right here. So down below here, what we're gonna do is say local crystals. And this is gonna be equal to replicated storage. And then we're gonna say colon find first child. We're gonna be looking for our folder. So in my case, I'm gonna put crystals because that's the name of my folder. If you change the name of your folder, this is the part that you would change. So inside here, I'm gonna put crystals. And you have to make sure that this exactly matches the name of the folder. After that, we're gonna say colon and get children. So what this is gonna do, it's going to take this folder here and it's gonna get all the children inside of it. So that's gonna be all the different crystal objects. And then what it's gonna do, it's going to put it inside of this variable here as a table. So what we're gonna do next is pick a random crystal from this folder. And we can do that by saying local. And then I'm gonna call this random crystal. And this is gonna be equal to our crystals table. And then from here, we're gonna select one of them. So we're gonna use square brackets. And the one that we're gonna select is gonna be math.random. Inside the parentheses, it's gonna go from one to the number of objects in our folder. And we can get the number of objects in the folder by saying number sign and then crystals. And then once it selects one, we're gonna make a copy of it. So we'll say colon clone. And then finally, we're just gonna set the parent and also the position property. So we'll say random crystal. And then we're gonna say dot parent. And this is gonna be equal to game.workspace. After that, we're gonna set the position. So we're gonna say random crystal dot position. And this is gonna be equal to rock position. All right, so that's everything we have to do for this script. So once you finish the script for one rock, if you wanna add more to the game, you can just make copies of this rock. So if you click on it and then press Control D, you'll make a copy of it, and then you can just move it to another spot in the game. So let's say you start with these five crystals, but later on you decide to add more. Then what you're gonna do is just create the new object. So in my case, just to keep it easy, I'm just gonna make a new crystal. And for this crystal, let's give it a new color. So for this one, let's make it black. What I'm gonna do next is change the name of it. So this is gonna be crystal six. After that, I'm gonna make a copy of it. And then I'm gonna put it inside of the folder. And that's all you have to do. So you don't have to make any changes for the script. So just create your object and then add it to the folder. Once you have the objects in the folder, if you don't wanna keep these in the game, you can just delete them. Another option would be to showcase these somewhere in the game. So you can show the players what crystals they can possibly get and maybe include the price underneath them. Okay, so later on, we're gonna be taking a look at how we can collect these crystals. For now though, this is gonna be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.